in the name of Jesus, Lord. We cry glory unto you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you will do in this service, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that we will not just be hearers of the word, but we shall be doers with what you impart in us today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Yes, yes. And as I would say, let's just jump into the beginning. And what I mean by the beginning is, let's jump into Genesis today. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Oh, this word is so good. Deacon, do you know that this word is so good that I desire it more? As I have grown spiritually, I desire it more than a cold cup of ice water yeah. on a hot sun, summer day. Mm. Mm. I never thought I would get there, but Mother Roberts, I have got there. Amen. That's and I'll tell you the best example, less than 24 hours ago, Deacon, my wife cooked short ribs of beef. <laughs> Barbecue sauce just bubbling on it. Extra oh, onions as I like it. Mm. Beans and rice. Macaroni and cheese. Amen, Bishop. And it ain't Thanksgiving. Mm. This is all day, every day. Yes, yes. Jesus. Something to drink. So special even had cupcakes. <laughs> Mother Robin's cupcakes. And cinnamon buns. The yes. little cute ones, you could just pop 30 in your mouth at one time. Amen. And my wife called me and said, come on up, Bishop. The food is ready. I said, nah, I'm in the Word. Amen. And the Word has filled my spirit, man, my soul, man. Amen. You hear me? This yes. Word gets so good that you get full Amen. with this Word. I used to hear that. But it was incomprehensible to me. And to know the very thing that I would run for immediately to eat. I was full. And most of all, I just could not pull away from the word of God. Amen. Now, my, mother, my wife didn't make no bread. So what I'll do now is make up and enjoy the bread of life that Amen. we have been so fit to be able to delve in today. Amen. So. Jesus. Genesis 21 and starting that one. Now I ain't going to tell you once God released me from the word no. what I did to that natural food. Amen. 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 <laughs> I ain't no fool now. All right. mm. When your wife cook, eat and enjoy. And that I did. And I thank you that I ain't got to force myself. Some people got to literally enjoy something that don't taste good. So from your husband to you, thank you for a joyous meal. I had two wonderful meals yesterday. Ain't that something? Amen. Jesus. Mm. So starting at Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. As he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken, as he has said, and as he has spoken. That's a promised word. Right then is a promised word. As he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Twice in his word, God said, I cannot lie to myself. And it's impossible for me to lie. Amen. If you pray, your word will not return void. There shall be an answer, but you have to be mindful that it might be yes, no, or not right now. Amen. Yes. Verse 2, for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. So verse 1 lets us know about the promise word. And verse 2 lets us know about the timing of God. Mm. So we got the promise 
and the timing of God. And Abraham, verse 3, called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised him, his son, Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Deacon, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Run around in the park at a hundred years old with your child? <laughs> Jesus. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh so that all that here will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given him children to suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew. It's amazing how she said, in his old age. Mm -hmm. And I think she was, at what time what, what was she, about 90, 85 at that time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know women don't play with their age, so neither shall I. Verse 8, and the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Verse 9, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Mm. Now, I told you verse 1 was the promise, and verse 2 was the timing. And I told you, if your timing is not God's timing, there's some innocent people that can be pulled into your mess. Mm. Verse 9 again, And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, the son being Ishmael, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondswoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So now Hagar is being pulled in this. Mm -hmm. And not only that, an innocent child is being dragged into this. Not only that, now being pushed to be homeless. And the thing, verse 11, was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. And because of the bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. I repeat, he says, in all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. He hearkened unto her voice when she asked him to go into his bondwoman. Hearken unto her voice now. Amen. And, oh, Jesus. Okay. Come on, Jesus. Verse 13. And also the son of the bondwoman will make a nation because he is thy seed. In spite of, he will still be blessed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water. Two people. Bread and a bottle of water. Okay. And gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Verse 15. And the water was spent in the bottle, drunk it all, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Verse 16. And she went and sat her down against him a good way off as it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and he sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept and God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of the God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her what aileth thee Hagar fear not for God hath heard the voice of the lad. Where is he? Mm -hmm. Understand this. Hagar was weeping too. Mm -hmm. 
But it was something about Ishmael that drew God's attention to send the angel to provide. Verse 18, arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand for I will make him a great nation. Mm -hmm. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Verse 20, and God was with the lad and God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Last verse, 21. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Amen? Amen. And from this, I want to leave you with a word for the day, as, as we saw in the story of Isaac being born in Ishmael, and God had promised, had already promised, in chapter 16, the promise of Isaac. But in chapter 16, they decided to move away from God's timing to man's timing. God had promised it. But one thing we can't do, saints, is give people the promise of God and not let them understand the timing of God. So the word I leave with you is you can't get an Isaac out of an Ishmael. Mm. The promise was Isaac, but because they couldn't wait for the timing on God, they got an Ishmael. Yes, yes. You can't get an Isaac out of the Ishmael. Man's timing versus God's divine timing. Mm. Amen? And that's what the scripture does say. It says, wait on the Lord, and I shall renew your strength. Amen. Need I say more? I believe that the one, that one of these things that we have really neglected teaching, Mother Roberts, on that is so relevant to the body of Christ is the timing. The timing of God. Amen? Amen? We already see in chapter 21 the timing and the promise was fulfilled. Oh, but because Jesus. of not respecting the timing, yes. but so eagerly as society today want the promise, chapter 16, and they interrupted it. And the bad thing, and this is something, Deacon, as I said earlier, that we have to remember, when we step out of God's timing into our own timing, Innocent people, lives are literally shattered. Yes. Literally, literally shattered even unto death. People's lives has changed drastically because of our timing when God is saying, I said I'm going to give you the promise. Mm -hmm. But if we don't teach on the timing, part of that is on us. So that's what I plan on doing to make sure that we understand not just the promises, because that's what God does, but it's the timing. Amen? Especially because we are in a I want it right now generation. You got a microwave, I mean, you got a remote control to the remote control. What I mean by that is if you lose the remote control, they got something that you can click so it can detect where the remote control is at. Jesus. Amen? Amen. You people will take hours looking for the remote control when I still remember that I can walk to the TV. That's the problem right there. And press the channel button. Yeah. Press the volume button. Mm -hmm. I can even press the off and on button. Yes. But that's the society that we are in now. Got to have it right now. Yes. Right now. Right now. The Bible lets us know in 2 Peter 3 and 8. But do not forget this one thing. Based off timing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. And Ecclesiastes 3.1 further lets us know, for everything, for everything, Pastor, mm -hmm. there is a season and a time. Jesus. There is a season and a time for every matter. 
Bishop. Under heaven. Yes. Yes. Lastly, Habakkuk, a book that a lot of people don't touch on, but Habakkuk got some good stuff. Habakkuk 2 and 3, this really finalizes by saying, for still, for still the vision awaits. It's appointed time. My God. It's appointed time. If it seems slow, Jesus. chill, relax, mm. wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. That's right. I think that if we teach on the promises of God without teaching on the timing of God, it creates great frustration. Yes. And that's exactly what, what, what happened in this story right here. And now innocent lives yes. have been dragged into it. Yes. Because what happens when we start teaching the promises of God, Mother Roberts, without the timing of God, you got people trying to get the promise out of time. Yes. Amen? You get Amen. people trying to get the promise literally out of time. Mm, Jesus. And as I was studying, I don't know why, but this song just kept popping in my head because it was one of the first songs that I literally listened to that made me draw closer to my mother understanding the words. And the song says, Mama used to say, Take your time, young man. Mama used to say, don't you rush to get old. Mama used to say, take it in your stride. Mama used to say, live your life. Live your life knowing that the promises will come. But there's timing for everything. Yes, I promise that I will have a car set before you. Mm -hmm. But you're only nine years old. So one, you 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 illegal to drive. And two, you can't drive. Mm -hmm. If you get the promise before the time, you'll kill yourself yes, and everybody yes. else. Amen. I got the house set up for you. Jesus. But you're 12 years old. You don't even know how to money manage. I need to make sure that I give you the tools to be able to not just get the house, but to keep the house. Yes. Timing, saints. Timing is all about the timing. And you cannot get the promise when it's not time. Mm. Because of competition, frustration, turmoil, because you're trying to get something prematurely. Mm -hmm. Let it grow. Let it go to its fruition. Some of us will get the half a million when God is saying, I got two billion. Mm. Calm down. Because I want you blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus. The Bible also warns us against judging ourselves by one another. And what I mean by this is, in other words, God says, don't come to me crying about what you see me doing for somebody else. Yes. God says, your success, hear me, Deacon, your success is not predicated on what I do with somebody else. Yes, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus even rebuked the disciples for questioning him about somebody else. Mm. And John 21 and 22, Peter. he gave it to him. Jesus said, if I keep him here until I come, what does that have to do with you? Yes. In other words, he did, I'm just keeping it as simple as Jesus said. Mm -hmm. What I do in the life of another believer is none of your business. Amen. Jesus. We waste too much energy trying to discern somebody else's time. We have misunderstood the whole gift of discerning. As we talked about earlier, we have missed the whole gift of discerning. I knew it was something. I thought about, no, that's just straight up being nosy. It is, the, it is discernment of spirits, not people. There are two things that we are given a biblical, a biblical principle, Mother Roberts, to discern. Two biblical principles. One of them is spirits, and the other one is what time it is. Mm -hmm. Time meaning as the men of Korah, discerning the time in which they lived. The second is spirits that you, you better be able to. Taints, let me tell you, you better be able to discern what spirits you are up against. You hear me, Deacon? Because if you cannot discern the type of spirit you are up against, you won't know what type of warfare tactic 
that you need on, to please. get the victory. Yeah. Ain't no sense of sinning. Victory is mine, and you don't even know what war you're fighting. Jesus. And you're trying to figure out how you get beat, because God is saying you're using the wrong weapon. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Ain't nothing like having a toolbox full of weaponry and don't know which one to pull. Amen. And if you can't discern what time it is, saints, you'll be trying to bear fruit when it's not your time. Jesus. The scripture states, whatever you sow, that shall you reap. Amen. That's what but you'll be trying to reap before you sow. Jesus. Timing, saints. Timing, saints, is all about God's timing. And you'll think that something is wrong when it's not wrong. It's just not the right time, Pastor. Jesus, hallelujah. Blaming everybody. Now you're in the blame game and God is saying that ain't nothing wrong. Mm. Slow down. Slow down. You can't get an Isaac out of an Ishmael. Mm, Jesus. But thank God for his love that he still gave Ishmael the blessing. Yes, that's Jesus love. dragged into something he didn't deserve, but God in his favor and his love, love and his mercy. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. That's why when people say, Lord, you don't understand my parents. Oh, God, God knew. God knew before you was here. Yes, he did. Amen. And if you walk in his counsel, he will take care of you too. Yes. The Bible lets us know, blessed is the man Jesus. That walk that, that walketh not, my favorite scripture in Psalms 1, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Jesus. And verse 2 goes like this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate, as Mother Roberts was talking about, Day and night. Hallelujah. When Prophet of Solomon said that, understand. Yeah. Now you are lined up with meditating on his word day and night. And from that scripture, it lets you know. That man that's blessed, that's walking not in the council of the God, ungodly, he's not hysterical, Ma. He's not upset. He's not nervous. He's not trying to make anything happen. He's just meditating in the word day and night. No stress. And the Bible says that you can study to be calm and meditate. You shall be, verse 3, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his own season. Amen. Timing, saints. Yes. No stress. No struggle. No pain, no warfare, just timing. Good just getting in the place you're supposed to be. Yes, Connecting your roots, your roots, Deacon. Nobody else is connecting your roots. Because every, as Pastor, as Pastor would constantly say, every man, after their own soul salvation, Amen. you are accountable for you. You cannot... Go to heaven on grandma's prayer. Amen. You got to get it for yourself. Amen. So connecting your roots to the source from which your strengths come and waiting it out. Amen, Just waiting it out. Amen, Those that wait on the Lord shall, renew their strength. must, and will All renew their strength. Yes. Need I say more? It's a promise if you follow suit. Knowing that when it's your time, you shall, key word, you shall bring forth fruit. Not might, Mother Roberts, but you shall bring forth fruit yes. in its own season. Somebody say shall. shall. Somebody shall. say shall, shall. like you mean it. Jesus. See, you got. Let me tell you, saints. You got to have a shall. You got to have a shall, Mother Roberts. Deep down in your spirit. You got to have a shell deep down in your spirit. I can't get this for you. But I can show enough instruct you on what you should have. Not a might, not an if, not a hope, not a could, not a would, but a shall. A shall, Pastor. Yes. 
you got to know, even when there's no flower, no blossom, yes. no bloom, yes. no bud on yes. the vine, you shall, you shall, you still got to know yeah. On the that when the time is right, it will happen, it shall happen, it must happen. Because as I told you earlier, God cannot lie to himself. It's yes. impossible yes. for him to lie. You don't have to do anything to bless yourself, Amen. promote yourself, Amen. push yourself. All you got to do is keep on feeding on the word of God, yes. meditating day and night. It's just that simple. And when it's time, God will cause that thing to happen in your life, as we call harvest time, Amen. promise time. Amen. He said, I got a promise. But you got to respect my time. Yes. Most of the miracles in the Bible came with the word suddenly, straightway, immediately. Mother Roberts, when I was writing this, I was thinking about you. That means that God can bring you into a season of blessing without warning. Hallelujah. Without warning. Hallelujah. Are you ready for it? Because there ain't no sense of getting a blessing and you can't even handle it. That means he can bring it into a season of blessing without warning. Mm. So if I may so boldly say unto you, saints of God, this afternoon I submit to you. I prophesy to you Jesus. that you have an appointed, an appointment with your blessing. Yeah. You have an appointment. That's right. Look at your watch. Uh -huh. Look at your watch. Mr. A, you got an appointment with your blessing. You have a predestined. You got to hear me, Deacon. You got to hear me. You have a predestined, predetermined, prearranged appointment with the blessing. And nobody, mm, and nobody is going to get credit for it but God. Can't nobody say, I did it for you. Nobody's going to get the credit but God. Yeah. Somebody please say with me, but God. But God, Jesus. Woo! No longer. Jesus. And as I try to conclude this, mm, but God, but God, no longer shall we be frustrated. No longer shall we be frustrated, saints, about the promises of God. Why? Because we fully understand the timing and respect the timing of God. What time is it, saints? What time is it? Time? What time is it? That's up to you to decide. What time is it? Jesus, Jesus. When we play ball, we say game time. The battle I'm on the right side is blessing time. Yes, Lord. Lastly, I just need you to take this home. Just kind of put this in your spiritual knapsack. Something I was listening to my wife talk about last night. I think my wife put in whew, probably about a good, not exaggerating, 25 to 40 hours preaching the gospel over the phone. But what I love too is how she listens and it's like she is receiving the word and not just giving as well. And um, I'll tell you every now and then I kind of listen and be like, ooh, I'm taking that right there. That's it right there. Amen. <laughs> but lastly, saints, and hear me, this is what you put in your spiritual knapsack and take with you. If there's not anything else, I need you to take this with you because of the promises and understanding the timing. Because we are in the world, just like Joseph and his family was in the world with Egypt. One thing we gotta understand, because we are in the world, things will come, Deacon. Things will come, Mother Roberts. Because we are in the world. But because we are not of the world, we will, we shall, we must overcome. Amen. But it's all about God's timing. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are in the world, so we understand 
Drama going to come. Foolishness going to come. All of those things will come to try to trip us up from the promise and let alone move us away from the timing of God. Yes. But because we are not of it, we will, we shall, we must overcome because we know where our help coming from. Yes. Amen? But we got to know. It's a two-part formula. It's a two-part formula as we read in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If, so when it says if, that's up to you. If my people Hallelujah. are called by my name. Yes. So understand this. If my people who are called by my name, deacon, Mother Robin's pastor, your name ain't your name no more. Because if you're walking with him, your name has changed. Yes. And the word Christian is the centerpiece of Christ. So if my people who are called by my name, Hallelujah, Jesus. you don't have your name no more. You're walking with him. Remember when you went to school and you act up, the parents went off, your mother went off? You know what my mother was so mad about? Because she said, you got my name. So they thinking that I ain't teaching you and training you up at home. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do represent represents Christ yes. fully. If my people who are called by my name Jesus. shall humble themselves and pray. and pray. Yes. So there's a first part to that that you can't even get the bottom part of the promises if you don't coincide with the first part. So God is saying, I got the promises for you. I need you to respect my time and understand my time. And even if you don't, it's okay. But if you try to get the promise out of time, you will cause some disasters, not just in your life, but in other people's lives. Yes. And as God said in Genesis, on the seventh day he rested, and Jesus said, take my yoke. Ah. It is easy. Ah. I will Holy give God. you rest. Yes. I so say like the lawyer in the courtroom, I rest my case that you cannot get an Isaac out of an Ishmael. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woman, amen. You cannot get an Isaac out of an Ishmael. Wasn't that a blessed word yes, on today? Yes, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give God all the praise for the man of God Hallelujah. that brought forth Jesus. such a blessed word. Yes, amen. Huh? That this is the blessing season. Amen. Yes, that Hallelujah. Jesus, he is the seed of Abraham in which all blessings flow. Yes. Amen. Huh? And we have declared and decreed today that this is the season for a blessing. Yes. Amen. represented the flesh. Yes. Isaac represented the spirit. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Hagar, he shall I know, represented the bond woman. He she did I know both Shabbat. Jesus. Sarah represented the free. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hagar and Sarah was representation of the two covenants. Hagar represented works. Sarah represented grace. Ah, she done know. Jesus. Hallelujah, faith by grace. Hallelujah. Which makes one free. But there's bondage in salvation by works. There's no such thing. That righteousness could not be obtained by man. But was obtained by God. Amen. 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 Are you going to receive your blessing from the Lord today? Yes. Have you received it in the word? When the word went out today, you heard the word. Did you receive it? And did you believe it? Beloved, if you received it and believed it, then you have received the blessing. But now will you apply it? Will you walk in the blessing? Amen. Will you walk in the blessing that has been given unto you through the word of God on today through Bishop Isaac Hurd. Amen. But beloved, for those of you that's watching the video, in order for you to believe the blessing and to walk in the blessing, you must first have the blesser. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes, yes. And the only way that you can have him that is the blesser, he is the seed of Abraham. Amen. In which all blessings do flow. Amen. We're not talking about it did not come from the line of Ishmael, for that was the line of the flesh. But this seed came through the line of Isaac. Ah, Shabbat. We're talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. He is the seed that God spoke of. Amen. He is the blesser of us all. He is that, 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 that vein in which all blessings flow. Jesus. So we offer you Jesus today. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Yes. He is the gospel. He is the word. We offer you him today. Yes. So we ask those of you that heard this gospel preached on today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you believe if your heart was pricked and you want to know what must you do Jesus. to obtain the blessing. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is have faith. So all you have to do is, is repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Hallelujah, Jesus. So just repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Here I am a sinner. Here I am a sinner. In my sins. In my sins. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Wash me in your blood. Wash me in your blood. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I believe. I believe. That you are Lord. That you are Lord. And I believe. And I believe that you have resurrected. That you have resurrected. Baptize me. Baptize me with your Holy Ghost and fire. With your Holy Ghost in and Jesus fire. Name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. And where you are, you are saved. We didn't allow you yes. to say it by yourself. We said it along with That's you, right. Amen. Jesus. Because you are in good company, as Bishop liked to say. Yes. Amen. You're in good company, Amen. We walking with you through this thing. Those yes. of us that have it, Amen. Yes, yes, we showing yes, you yes, how yes, to yes, take yes. the way. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Go find you a church where Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection is being preached and taught. And go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.